Avatar The Last Airbender, such an iconic Nickelodeon series. I'm pretty sure everybody has watched this show at some point in their lives, and I am one of those people. I consider it my second favorite Nicktoon, with Spongebob taking number one, and like I said in my belated happy birthday video, this franchise doesn't have the best luck when it tries to branch out into other things. The video games sucked, the live action movies sucked, and the spin-off show, while it's not not as atrocious as everyone says, it certainly failed to live up to the highs of its predecessor. So for some reason, Netflix has decided to make a live action Avatar TV series. Honestly, I don't know why they're so obsessed with making live-action adaptations. Can't you just let things stay in animation? But who cares what I think. So it's been a couple of days, and the general consensus is that the show is pretty good. So good that people want a season two. Are we the only ones here who are completely confused? So I decided to watch it, and now I want to talk about it. Like the Velma video, we're going to go over each and every single episode, give my thoughts and opinions, then we're going to wrap it all up. Let's go. Here we are, the first episode. And do you guys remember how we saw the aftermath of the firebenders destroying the Southern Air Temple in the original show? Well, guess what? In this show, we start off with the firebenders slaughtering the nomads. Remember, no survivors. Jesus Christ. I just want to let you know, they got rid of Sokka's sexism, but they included the scene where the firebenders killed the nomads. Oh, right. At the start of the episode, we also get a moment where an earthbender gets burnt to a crisp right in front of us. Because it is our time. Jesus Christ. For the rest of the episode, it follows the original to a T. Aang goes riding with Appa after finding out he's the Avatar. He ends up in a storm, he traps himself in an ice spear for a hundred years, he meets Sokka and Katara who catch him up to speed, Zuko and Iroh go over to the Water Tribe to kidnap him, yada yada yada, you know where this is going. The first problem that is majorly apparent is this show's use of tell don't show. We have moments of characters blatantly telling us how they feel for each other, their motivations and intentions instead of, you know, showing us. I know who I am. I like to play air ball and eat banana cakes and goof off with my friends. That's who I am. It's incredible. The CGI, although it looks competent, can be very spotty at certain points, specifically when Aang starts gliding in the air. I think the pacing is a little fast, which is funny because this episode is one hour and four minutes long. It just feels like they're going scene to scene to scene really quickly. Like, come on, hurry up, let's go, we gotta keep this going, we can't waste time, go, go, go. The episode has this really cringe moment where they take the intro that was used in the cartoon and just drop it into the episode. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And although the acting is mostly solid, some of these line readings are just... not good. And those are my only criticisms. Now let's get into some good things. The characters stay pretty consistent with who they are. The characters that stay consistent are Zuko, Iroh, Aang, Katara, Gyatso, and Appa. Yes, I'm counting Appa. The character who I feel is noticeably more watered down is Sokka. I don't know why, but his snarky behavior is not present in this episode. And that really sucks. I would say that everything is respectfully adapted from the show. 
the water tribe looks good the fire nation looks good the earth bending looks good the air bending looks good overall the bending in this show so far looks pretty strong I will admit it was fun to say, hey, I know that, when watching this episode. For example, hey, I know Appa, the flying sky bison. Hey, I know Sokka's club. Hey, I know the Fire Nation ship. Hey, I know the ice sphere. Hey, I know Aang's glider. Alright, I get it! But to be brutally honest, it's a very mid introduction to this live action series. Let's hope it stays mid throughout the experience and it doesn't crash and burn. Taking place exactly where the last episode ended, Aang, Sokka, and Katara make their way over to Kiyoshi Island so that Aang can master the Avatar state. And while that's going on, Zuko, Iroh, and Commander Zhao make their way over to said island. I would say this one is slightly better than the first. There's not as many exposition dumps as there were in the first episode. I thought the land of Kiyoshi was pretty nice looking. It was great to see the Kiyoshi warriors in the flesh. Avatar Kiyoshi taking over Aang's body and beating everyone's ass was cool. I thought the fight scene at the end was pretty nice. I particularly liked seeing Sokka and Suki work together, even though I prefer the original to this, but whatever. I think Momo looks pretty good, and that's it. Now here are some of my criticisms. Uh. Excuse me. Disgusting! Suki is snotty as fuck in this show, which is really weird. And I don't know why, but they have her simp for Sokka really hard in this episode. And for me, it doesn't feel earned. It just feels really forced. Instead of Zuko burning down the village, it is instead Commander Zhao who does the burning. I say burning in quotations because he doesn't really do that much damage to the village. One more thing that's more of a nitpick. They have this moment where Aang is riding around on this gust of wind like in the original show, and it looks fucking horrible. That's his real power. Connection. Building bridges. That's how he's going to be the Avatar. Oh! But I guess I should just ignore that because if I point out any criticisms with this live action show, people are going to label me as a nitpicking bitch who just can't have fun with things. So yeah, this episode is definitely an improvement over the last one. Let's get on to the next one. Aang, Katara, and Sokka make their way over to the Northern Water Tribe only to stop at Omashu. While they're there, they come across some familiar faces. Then later in the episode, Iroh and Zuko travel to Omashu to jump Aang and the others. We get a little bit of Azula in this one. I got one good laugh out of this entire episode. They don't take kindly to outsiders in Omashu. What makes you think we're outsiders? That was funny. I thought Omashu looked pretty nice. Jet's fight scene in this episode was great. The fight between Aang and Zuko was great. It really goes to show that these actors worked hard to perfect this scene. Somewhat. Now for the bad things. This episode really goes to show how everything from the original is crammed into each episode. Remember the episode The Northern Air Temple? An episode that shows that this old air temple has been modified by this old inventor and this kid who uses a glider to fly around? Yeah, they're in this episode. They're here. Okay. You remember Jet? Yeah, well, he and his group are in here too. You remember Azula, Ty Lee, and May? Yeah, well, we see them in this episode as well. Even though in the original, they didn't make a physical appearance until book two. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Okay, maybe I should tone down my nerdiness because I know damn well there's gonna be some fanboys that will be upset with me for not looking at this as its own thing. Okay, I will cap it off with one good thing about this episode. They brought the Cabbage Merchant back. Hey, watch out for my kill. It is so good to see him again.
After getting captured in the last episode, Aang meets Boomy. Remember Boomy? Yeah, I liked Boomy. I thought he was pretty cool. So while the two are playing catch-up, Katara and Sokka try to go and rescue Aang, but they run into some complications along the way. If there's one thing I really like so far, it's seeing Iroh and Aang talk to each other. I don't know why, I just really like seeing these two communicate. In this episode, Katara gets her water pouch. Yes, they have a scene dedicated to it. Okay. I like the fight sequence between Aang and Boomy. I like the little heart to heart that Katara and Sokka have in the cave. And I like this little flashback that Iroh had. I thought it was nice and heartwarming. I'm not kidding. I really like that scene. It was really great. There's fewer negatives with this episode compared to the last three. There's only one nitpick. You guys remember the cave of two lovers from book two? Yeah, they crammed that episode into this one. That's the only nitpick I have, so don't go bitching in the comments. Every time. So far, compared to the other three, this episode is significantly better because I actually liked some of the things it offered. Now let's see if they can keep this up. Oh my god, this shot looks so bad. While they're traveling, Aang and the others come across a couple of people in the forest. After discovering that they've lost a group of people, Aang decides to go into the spirit world to go and rescue them, and he unintentionally brings Katara and Sokka into the spirit world. While that's going on, Iroh and Zuko continue their pursuit, with the help of June the Bounty Hunter. No, not that one. Yes, that one. They bring in Wan Shi Tong in this episode. It was pretty cool to see him, especially since he's voiced by the legendary Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. There is one who lives in a stone hut not far beyond the woods. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. They implement the Swamp episode into this episode by having Sokka, Katara, and Aang face their truths. With Sokka, it's meeting his father and not living up to the expectations that are placed upon him. With Katara, it's meeting her mother and witnessing her death again. And for Aang, it's meeting Gyatsu again. And for what it is, I'd say... It's implemented fine. It's not bad. There are two goofy-ass jump scares that I thought were pretty funny. <gasps> they also throw in Ko the Face Stealer, who is alright. We see a little more of Azula in this one. She's here and... That's okay. There's not as many negatives with this episode compared to the last few. Just like in the dark, it's alright. Aang travels to the Fire Nation to get in contact with Avatar Roku because he might know a way to take down Ko the Face Stealer, who by the way has kidnapped Katara and Sokka. While that's going on, Admiral Zhao takes over the operation of capturing the Avatar, so naturally Iroh and Zuko do their own thing. I like the little flashback with Iroh and Zuko. I liked Avatar Roku's playful demeanor when he meets Aang for the first time. The flashback of Zuko getting his face burned was alright. I thought that was executed well. I got a couple of smirks and chuckles out of this episode. Is it not customary to bow before your elders? And to avert your eyes? And... Hop on one leg. <laughs> and of course, you've got the legendary moment from the original show of Zuko going undercover, wearing this legendary mask, and breaking Aang out of prison. And I'll be honest, it was pretty good. 
And I like how Zuko and Aang get a chance to speak to each other. I thought that was pretty good, because this is something that the original didn't do. So, I gotta, I gotta give you guys a thumbs up for that. Very good job. Are there any nitpicks? Not really. I did have this what the fuck moment though. I trust you. You know why? Because if there's any missing, you'll come after us? Because you're so cute. Mm. Okay, what the f Another thing, when they're showing Zuko getting burned by Ozai, when they show Azula, there's a moment where they show a tear in her eye. I guess they're going for a more sympathetic approach. I don't know how the fans are going to feel about that. Anyway, this was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. Now let's see if the next one can be just as good. <laughs> yeah, right. After everything they've been through, Aang, Katara, and Sokka have made it to the Northern Water Tribe. And this episode is basically the same as the animated version. We check out Azula getting pissed off that Daddy doesn't give her the praise that she wants, so she eventually goes off on her own. You have Sokka simping over Yure. Which is weird, because remember when you kissed Suki? Yeah, 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 I guess we're gonna have to throw that out the window. After getting rid of Zuko, can you sense the sarcasm in my voice? Iroh and Zhao make their way over to the Northern Water Tribe. This one is alright. I liked this line. We're Team Avatar. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. The fight with Paku and Katara was fine. That's it. Unlike Into the Darkness, Spirited Away, and Masks, this episode has a lot of problems. I don't really care about Sokka and Yurei's relationship, and this part of the episode is really interesting. I'll let the scene play. This is not up for debate. I've been fighting firebenders ever since I left home. Can any of your men say that? That doesn't matter. Why not? Because this isn't about them, it's about you. You're not strong enough. Women aren't strong enough. So let me get this straight. They got rid of Sokka's sexism, but there's still sexism that's present in Paku. Yeah, I don't know. This is a classic example of having your cake and eating it too. Also, they have Aang cut ties with Katara because he doesn't want to lose her or Sokka for that matter. Because throughout the season, the avatars keep telling Aang that he shouldn't connect himself with other people because when you lose those people, it will cause you a great deal of pain. Basically off of some Star Wars prequel shit. And the fight between Paku and Katara doesn't really feel earned in this one since Paku isn't condescending or rude towards Katara in any way. And also, this part right here. Braids don't work that way. Anyway, this episode is weaker than the last one. Let's hope it ends off strong. Thank God we're in the last episode. I don't know how far I could go. For the last episode of this season, Aang, Katara, and Sokka defend the Northern Water Tribe from the Fire Nation. Basically the same as the animated version. Alright, I get it! Okay, let's be nice and point out some good things. I loved seeing Iroh and Zuko hug. That was nice. I found it fucking hilarious when they made us think they were going to kill off Momo. Which honestly wouldn't bother me because Momo has been pretty fucking useless in this show. You, you ruthless, tartless bastard! Okay. We have an Avengers Endgame moment with all the females coming together to help. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. And I'm not being sarcastic, that, that is genuinely cool. <laughs> triggered? I'm triggered! You sexist, bigot, racist, stupid cis male! Katara and Zuko's fight was pretty good, as well as the fight between Zuko and Zhao. Aang becoming a water monster was pretty good. It didn't look cheap, it looked pretty good. 
And I haven't mentioned it, but I really like the actor who plays Zhao. I think he did a great job in this series. Iroh's facial expressions made me laugh my goddamn ass off. <laughs> I like how they acknowledge the carnage that happened in this episode. Because that's always bugged me about the animated Nope, no 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 cannot make comparisons, cannot make comparisons. Cinematography was pretty strong in this one, and that's it. Are there some problems? A couple. This episode's pacing is way too quick. There are too many explosions for my taste. It kind of felt like a Michael Bay movie. And there was unnecessary slow-mo in here that wouldn't be out of place in a Zack Snyder movie. The emotion in this one didn't really work for me, especially Yuri's sacrifice, which, I'm sorry, it didn't do much for me. I know people are going to call me a heartless bastard, but that's just how I feel. They even have an obligatory post credit scene that talks about the Sozin's Comet, which means there's going to be a Season 2 of this show. FUCK! As season finales go, it was decent, it had action, it had cool moments, it had cool fight scenes. That said, now I can wrap this up, finally, what the fuck? Alright, let's start off with the good things so these fucking punks don't accuse me of being overly negative. The environments in this show look really good. You can tell that the people working on this show watch the original series so they can make sure that the environments look accurate to the cartoon. Speaking of accuracy, the outfits look pretty faithful to the cartoon. Way better than what that shitty live action movie did. There were a couple of chuckle-worthy moments in this show, and that's due to Iroh and Aang having some good lines here and there. Speaking of the characters, I say the actors were decent. The line deliveries are not wooden, for the most part. They did a good job, although I think Iroh is easily my favorite. Speaking of Iroh, I really like the relationship dynamic of Iroh and Zuko in this show. It stays true to the original, and whenever an emotional moment happened, it was pretty effective. Buten gave me this. He'd won it for finishing first in his officer class. He said it should belong to someone destined to do great things. He gave me strength. And it's not just Iroh and Zuko that I like. I think Aang, for the most part, is pretty decent. He's much more serious compared to his 2005 counterpart, but not too serious to the point where it's like, why am I following this guy? He smiles, he makes quips, and he gets along well with everybody. Boomy was fun to watch as well. I also think Admiral Zhao was pretty fun to watch because I feel like the actor was having a good time playing this character. And Fire Lord Ozai was alright. He comes across as really intimidating in this one. And finally, the bending in this show is pretty top notch. I really get the sense that the actors were trying their hardest to make sure that the bending looked interesting. And they all did a great job. Are we done? Are we done jerking this show off? Okay, good. Now it's time to bitch and complain. My biggest issue with this show is that it has a bad habit of tell don't show. There are massive exposition dumps throughout all 8 episodes that it would make Kingdom Hearts blush. I'm telling you, if you were to play a drinking game, you would be dead because of how many times these characters just explain shit. Even though the people who made this wanted to appeal to a more adult audience, they really don't have faith in their audience's intelligence when they constantly feel the need to explain everything. It kind of shoots your point in the foot. Speaking of which, I really hate the pacing in this show. Everything is just too needlessly padded, rushed, and drawn out. And that's because in some of these episodes, they take characters, ideas, and places that have their own episodes and just throw them in there. It just feels way too overstuffed. 
and usually I don't mind long run times. I mean, for the love of God, I'm getting a kick out of Invincible and Mahler, but this show right here is a clear example of how sometimes shows that have a long run time don't always work. And although I said the bending was pretty good, the water bending in particular is not as strong as the air bending, the fire bending, or the earth bending. As for the characters, you'll notice I didn't mention Katara and Sokka in the good portion of the video. That's because I feel like the relationship dynamic between these three is forced and not as strongly written as it was in the animated show. It just feels like they're together out of necessity, not because they're actually friends. It just feels like, hey, these guys were friends in the animated show, let's make them friends here without, you know, actually building a relationship between them. And even then, Katara and Sokka do precisely fuck all in this show. It just feels like they're there because they need to be, because this is Avatar The Last Airbender, and it wouldn't be Avatar The Last Airbender without these two involved. Another thing, Aang shows no romantic attraction towards Katara at any point in this show, which heavily implies that they're going to ship Katara with Zuko. Why? Why? I don't fucking know, this was a popular ship in the original series, and I don't know why, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Can't two characters just be friends without you guys automatically wanting to ship them? No! And as for the other characters like Suki, Momo, Appa, Tai Lee, Mei, Yurei, the Avatars, the Inventor and his kid, Jet and his crew, the Nomads, the Face Stealer, and other characters I forgot to mention are not interesting and I don't care about any of them. They are just paper thin, watered down versions of themselves. With the exception of Boomy. Boomy is cool. And as for Azula, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going to like where they're taking her character. Because in some of these episodes, they're painting her in a more sympathetic light. Yep, the typical misunderstood character that we should like because god forbid we can't have villains that are pure evil. And honestly, I don't feel the need to go into this because the internet is doing that job for me. And listen, there's a variety of different stuff I can complain and nitpick about. But you know what? I'm not going to. Let's just wrap this up. Alright, let's answer these questions. Is it better than the 2010 movie? Yes. Will people get a kick out of it? Maybe. Will diehard fans like it? Depends. Is it better than the original? No fucking way! Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender is the perfect example of a mid-experience. It has good things, it has bad things, it's a piece of media that's most likely not going to stick with you after you're done watching 8 episodes. And here's one thing I don't get, why do people want to watch these live action adaptations? What's so wrong with having these cartoons stay the way they are? It's like a wise old man once said, when something starts as a cartoon, keep it as a cartoon. We don't need these live action adaptations because let's be real, they're never going to match the spirit and soul of the original. If anything, give us a sequel to the original. Why don't we get a movie focusing on the adult versions of Aang and the others? I would rather take a Korra sequel over a live action adaptation any day of the week. Huh. What do you know? Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of Avatar The Last Airbender from Netflix? Tell me in the comments section below, and I'll catch you guys later.